Cowboy Jim, Northern Alberta, Canada. Reviewing the life and times of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God, on this, what is called Good Friday, the day that Jesus was crucified. Mixed emotions for me. Um, the gravest of sadness that this was the only answer that God had was to make available to you and I <clears throat> salvation, peace, a second, a third, a fourth opportunity to be at peace with God. And so it's sad, but it's joyful because I've never had my back against the wall when God brought me through and we took the bull by the horns and always, always, always it is well with my soul. I remember uh, my last marriage divorce. Huh. Some good times, some bad, some real bad. My horse being killed. My stepchildren moving back home. <laughs> Better than working. And I think, you know, no matter what it is that God's brought me through, I am not sad. I, moreover, am thrilled, happy. I thank God oh, that I'm still not at the ranch. Oh, it was beautiful. It was glorious. I would sit out under the deck on the second floor. The deck was covered. Um, the roof material just for the tile, metal tile, uh, was $27,000. And I just so love sitting in the rain under that covered deck that was 176 foot long. I built it, went down the south side of the house, uh, crossed north on the east end, and the same width length of deck on the north side covered. And God and I would sit out there And I would recall every aspect of building, every building on that ranch. I remembered it well. And I so appreciated that God allowed me the privilege and the honor of building a house. Uh, when it was done, appraised at a million one just for the house and five acres. And I thought, God, I always wanted to build such a place as this. I would probably have enjoyed that house for a longer period of time. But given that all things work together for good for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose,
<laughs> when you are with the wrong person, you want to ask yourself, how in the world did this happen? Well, it comes down to your own stupidity. My own stupidity. I spoke to the RCMP about my horse being killed. And the officer was uh, not stupid. He said, Jim, they killed your horse. They could easily have killed you without a singular conscious thought. So truly, all things work together for good for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. I walk in that. I believe that. I know that to be true. One small tidbit I want to throw at you. I used to sit under the deck at night. I worked 12 hours a day, most often seven days a week. Unless I were going into town on Sunday night to watch George Canyon preach. I loved that preaching. He was so good. God anointed him. He touched my heart. I would sit in the service by myself, incidentally, having driven my little Corvette into town. And I would sit there. I listened to George preach, the son of a preacher, a country music hero of mine. My grandson is called Martin. He's also a country music recording artist. My grandson met George Canyon in the Calgary airport one night. And my grandson, he's about as shy as I am, although I really am shy, but I, I push myself to the limits. And my grandson went over to George and he said, you know, my grandpa, Grandpa Jim, he uh, he goes to your church, and uh, and George said, "Well, I never met him." Well, he, George, I I I never shook George Canyon's hand. He was always talking to someone. I just nodded at him and I walked in and sat down. And when I would sit down, I would. Weep like a baby. George Canyon's wife, she uh, uh, often sat off on the next row behind me, 10 foot away. All I did was commune with God and weep. And when the service was done, George was such a good, such a good preacher. And he led the praise and worship. And it was like your own private little George Canyon concert. It was so good. His wife would always nod to me at the end of the service. And I would get out of there as quickly as I could and get into my little Corvette and drive back to the ranch. And I knew that it had been good to be there to honor God and to watch George Canyon. Uh, that night, my grandson ran into George at the airport. My grandson's name is Cole Martin, and uh, he has, uh, uh, I think, five or six uh, singles out now. One is called Thunder. One is called Underneath the Covers. One is called It's Yours to Take. 
I think that's what the last one was. Uh, another one called Why. Well, you may well ask yourself why. Half the things in your life happen. Well, most of the problems we get into, it's because of our own stupid fault. And most of our money issues are because we never learned how to, how to uh, spend wisely and save wisely. Never spend all you make. Always have a cushion. George Canyon that night, he asked my grandson, he says, well, what is, what does your grandpa look like? And my grandson said, he wears a black cowboy hat, long hair and long white hair. And George says, I remember him well. We never spoke, but he remembered me. It would be the desire of my heart that George Canyon someday would watch uh, this YouTube video and hire my grandson to open for him. Uh, my grandson was going to open for Cor Blund, uh, and then along came COVID and uh, shut that down. I want to delve into a couple of things here. Um, I'm thinking this is the last video of the day. Um, thus, I want to read just a, a little tiny bit out of Luke um, about Jesus hanging on the cross. The title of it is The Death of Jesus. And it was about the sixth hour, and there was a darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. And the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was rent in the midst, middle, from top to bottom. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he, Jesus, said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. Jesus had told his uh, disciples that he, Jesus, had the power to lay his life down and to take it up again. Jesus the God-man, part God, part man, without sin, had to be. He had to have lived a whole life without sinning once in order to be suitable uh, for that blood sacrifice that took place on the cross um, that gave us the opportunity of believing in him. I've got to tell you, I'll try to do it without a singular shred of emotion. But the Lord lays people on my heart. And today, of all days, Good Friday, I have a, a friend. Uh, who caught a puck in his mouth one time, left a bit of a vacant space there. Teeth were gone. I uh, joked around with him quite a bit. And I said, uh, I bet it was a short guy that knocked your teeth out. He's really big, eh? He said it was. I said, yeah, I bet. I said... Short guy probably had to run at you and climb up your leg uh, before he drifted you in the mouth. He said, no, he said, short guy shot a puck at me and I called it. When God lays someone on my heart, I pray for them. So I don't know what my friend is going through. I don't know 
where he's at in the Lord. I guarantee you, I just bet he's getting a lot closer to the Lord. Okay. Okay. Um, Jesus died. More importantly, uh, Jesus gave up the ghost, his spirit. Jesus was the one who determined when he would die. He chose the time. And um, uh, coming on toward the end of the day, after the ninth hour, uh, the skies brightened again. And, uh, the day became day, but for uh, three hours there, it was pretty dark. Um uh, Because God made sure that everyone knew that this Jesus was who he said he was. That this Jesus was truly the son of the living God. So the problem with uh, the leaders of the synagogue and so on was that they had to have the young men carry these bodies uh, and bury them before the end of the day. They couldn't be left hanging on the cross overnight. And so the centurions knew this, and they, uh, they went and they did what is, well, after the crucifixion, nothing is un unthinkable. Um, they took and broke the legs of the uh, wonderful thief who repented and said to Jesus, this day when you come into your glory, remember me. And Jesus had said, all three were in agony. Jesus had said, this day, you will be with me in paradise. Well, what the centurions had to do in order to fulfill the religion of the synagogue leaders was to break the legs of the people crucified so that they could no longer stand the agony of elevating themselves by pressing down on their legs. Their legs were broken. Thus, in but a few minutes, they suffocated. So they couldn't raise themselves to breathe. Exhale first, then breathe. They came to Jesus, and they looked at him. The centurion knew he was dead. He had, he had watched as Jesus gave up the ghost, the, hope, the ghost. Not a ghost like we think of gave up his life, his spirit. And the centurion had said, this truly was a righteous man. And so instead of breaking his legs, he was already dead. Um, they just needed proof that he was dead. So they took a spear in the side of Jesus Christ and rammed it in there and blood and water poured out. Blood and water. Blood was shed for the remission of sins. Water. Well, that had a lot to do with baptism by immersion. But it also had to do with one of the signs that Jesus really was dead. So let's not read too much into that. There was a fellow there uh, by the name of Joseph of Arimathea. He um, was part of that religious group of synagogue leaders, but he dissented. He was the only one who would not agree uh, with the rest of the spiritual 
religious leaders, he disagreed. He did not want Jesus to be crucified, killed. Because Joseph of Arimathea was looking for the Savior. Expectation was of the Savior. And when Jesus was crucified and all the things happened, uh, that fulfilled the prophecy, such as um, Jesus, it was said hundreds and hundreds of years before, that he would not have a broken bone. Well, that's a very novel thing. Um, as I sit here, I uh, try diligently not to move my left arm uh, because I have a large portion of the a humorous bone broken right off, and it is trying diligently to reconnect and heal. And uh, yeah, probably would have been quicker uh, if the surgeon had just uh, cut it open a bit uh, arthroscopically. I don't like when they cut the whole blessed bloody thing apart uh, and put a screw in. But God is undertaking and healing, and the pain is diminished. Um, I am convinced of that. And uh, pain is merely uh, a hint to you that um, there's a bigger problem. Okay, It's not the pain. It's the cause of the pain. Okay? It's just a fact of life. Get on a horse, get bucked off, hit the ground, and quite often you hurt something. Quite often. Joseph, Joseph of Arimathea, rich man, um, he had a tomb hewn out of rock. Uh, the doorway, uh, the cover of that tomb. Oh, this is terrible. I don't know what to do with that. But anyways, that might help. I hope it does. Well, I think it didn't. And um, Joseph went to Pilate and he asked if he could take Jesus' body and put it in the tomb. And uh, Pilate said, sure, yeah, you, you get rid of one body, help these uh, nutcases in the synagogue uh, uh, not to feel bad. I mean, lest they leave someone hanging on the cross overnight. And uh, so the young men went, and gathered Jesus and the two thieves, and they planted the two thieves wherever they planted them, but they took Jesus uh, to Joseph of Arimathea's grave, hewn from stone, and Joseph wrapped him in linen and so on, and laid him in on the appropriate big rocks table type thing, and rolled the stone back in place. Now, the women who had been following uh, Jesus and watched the whole crucifixion from a distance, um, Mary, his mother, uh, whom he had told John, uh, woman, and he looked at John, he said, this is now your son. He said to John, John, this is now your mother. Take care of my mother. Basically, that's what he said while he was hanging on the cross. Hey, there's a problem with being too preoccupied with your own hurt, your own pain, your own situation. And that is you lose sight of those who are standing around about hoping that you, you will notice them. So these ladies all watched where Joseph of Arimathea put Jesus. And it was, it was um, uh, time for them to leave, to get ready for the Sabbath, Saturday. Um, but they had plans, those ladies. And their plans were simply this, uh, to gather ointment. Uh, uh, I mean, over in Israel, unless it was a dead winter, and they sometimes got a bit of snow, uh, bodies deteriorated quickly uh, in the heat and even in the cool of a cave uh, uh, where Jesus was buried. And they made plans for the next day 
to come back and to anoint Jesus, to clean him up, to wash him, anoint him with oil and spices, um, to honor their Lord, their Savior, yours if you choose, mine, a chose man, a chose. Wow, yes, I did. The next morning, those ladies came back to the tomb and they were kind of curious who they'd get to roll the big rock stone door aside round rock. And they, like, who, how do they move the giant blessed rock? But the rock was put there so that no ravenous animals would uh, eat the bodies. And um, in this case, it was just one body, Jesus, in that tomb. And when they got to the tomb, uh, the rock was already rolled away. And they just went right inside that tomb. Eh? Picture a small room, round probably about eight foot across, Jesus uh, on the table, on, on a rock table level area but Jesus wasn't there his clothes the linen it was there Jesus was knowing the two ladies uh, they, they had just run right inside I might get this part of it mixed up a bit I don't care um, it was either at that occasion um, that two angels appeared and said, uh, women, why are you looking for uh, Jesus amongst the dead? He is not dead. He lives. Those ladies, uh, there, there's w one thing that I remember from one of the books of the New Testament. And... Uh, and uh, the, I think it was Mary Magdalene uh, come out of the tomb and, and there was a guy standing there. And uh, I'm going gonna, gonna to refresh myself eh, on that. So I'm going to be very careful here. It's too important to just loosely screw up on. Those ladies went back to the disciples and said, uh, Jesus is going, eh? His body's going. It's, he's going. Uh, Peter, the firebrand, uh, ran ahead of everyone. He ran right into that tomb. And uh, Jesus was not there. I'm going to leave it there until I read this again because it's... It's, it's far too important for me to rely on my own memory. The Lord says, well done. Hey, God knows me. There is no pretense with me. I am but when I appear to be. You are going to live until you die. Only you can determine what you do with this Jesus, this Savior, this Lord, of lords, king of kings, soon coming king, the Lamb of God. Only you can determine what you're going to do with him. I'm kind of glad of that. I am glad that God has given me the privilege and the honor 
of doing these YouTube videos. The joy of honoring Jesus, God. And honoring the people that I work with. The people I care for. Cowboy Jim. I'll never forget that. Ever. You're going to live until you die. You and you alone will determine where you spend eternity. It's up to you. I remember the young man on the bus. Pretty sure I remember his name. Really liked that dude. He was a strong man and a bodybuilder. He stopped beside my seat as he was sitting behind me. He was getting off uh, the bus and I was waiting to closer to the end. And he, uh, he stopped, he looked at me. He said, Jim, you are an, an anomaly. I looked at him. And uh, yeah, I'd never heard that word used in a sentence structure in my life. But I am an anomaly. Not at all what you would expect. I remember meeting a man uh, whose house I was supposed to work on. And he said, I bet you have had a lot of barroom fights. I just looked at him. I thought, I've never had a barroom fight. At that time, I probably hadn't been in a, in a bar for 30 years. Don't happen to like those places. Let's say, unless my grandson's singing there, then I enjoy it. Well, God bless you, and you all have a good day. I'm not sure if God and I are going to do one more video. I think we might. So I have to get that part straight. The sequence of the people coming to the uh, tomb. I need, I need that right. I need that, that self-confidence. But I need the confidence that I have done my due diligence. And um, I hope when you get to be 75, you're a little sharper than I am. I doubt very much that you'll be in as good a physical shape as I am, but even then I'm starting to look old. Okay? It's quite a shock. God bless you. Thank you for the honor and the privilege of you allowing me to do a video that you would watch through to the end. Thank you, and God bless you. Only you will determine where you spend eternity. Only you will determine heaven or hell. I'm glad that it is you, not God, not Jesus, not me. Just you. God made the way through Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. You choose to believe in God and Jesus and or in Satan. It's your choice. Choose wisely, children. Choose wisely. Thank you. God bless.